Hi, this is Shadi. Today we will be visiting some World War II footage of the US Army training in grappling and hand-to-hand -hand combat. However, I could not help but notice a lot of the techniques used back then are staples of today's Jiu-Jitsu or BJJ for a lot of people. And it's not only the self-defense part, but rather the competitive aspect of Jiu-Jitsu today you can find a lot of these techniques and I find that very interesting because with the rules, jujitsu's expression uh, has become somewhat uh, very well known. So you will see a lot of these staple techniques that are known for jujitsu. They're found in judo, of course, but jujitsu jiu has somewhat specialized in them. And the first one being the classic arm drag it's a lot of people's first takedown that they learned so a wrist grip followed by cupping the wrist stepping over to the side and giving them a way to go over now how you do with your legs it differs not all arm drags are the same so here for example blocking the ankle makes it in a yoko gake a lot of people like to flatten their leg and letting them all go over it which makes it an ukiwaza so not all of them are the same like i said i believe marcelo garcia does a kouchi makikomi from a, an arm drag technique or entry so here is a second variation of yoko gake it might look like a sasai but you actually let them whirl over you blocking their ankle so but obviously gi and the no gi uh, being very popular today you have the grip that the u.s army has used and uh, here you see bodoni adcc champion demonstrating it on bjj fanatics stepping to the side and blocking the ankle very similar to what we just saw however he does use it for different reasons mainly getting to the back so a snap down and then get to the back or forcing your opponent to turtle again it's not judo the throw is not the main priority next of course is leg pickups so after the arm drag a lot of people obviously learned something like the double leg takedown it can be a reap where you pull towards you and dive down or it can be a massive pick up if you have a very strong entry and you are physically strong where you can pick your opponent up like this and then here lacing the legs together or holding them close together controlling the hips and then putting them down knee control again very synonymous with jujitsu today so it's really nice and refreshing to see them also as military training techniques and here a big pick up again not to be confused uh, with moro tegari it's a completely different technique it's where you reap towards you and dive down a pick up as a scooping throw so here for example the kodokan differentiates sukuinage and moro tegari basically saying here that because there was a big lift upwards this is now a scooping throw rather than a reap with the hands so as you can see um, very much uh, effective competitively not just self-defense oriented next here you see a hip toss but with an overhook also the over and under grip pummeling uh, like wrestlers it's also very much present in the nogi realm of jujitsu. So uh, I do believe that holding with an overhook like this, it is no longer an ogoshi, a major hips throw, but it's rather a uh, tsurikomi goshi because of the overhook somewhat acts like how we unbalance with the lapel in gi. So. Uh, I also covered this in the Greco-Roman uh, techniques. I'll link it at the end. And obviously a lot of people like to learn hip tosses in Jiu-Jitsu as well. Craig Jones being one of them. 
So this next one is a double wrist lock grip followed by a sumi gaishi. Again, sumi gaishi is a lot of jujitsu practitioners' favorite uh, sacrificing technique. It does not require the unbalancing that something like a tomoe nage would need because it can get very tricky when unbalancing and also with the straight leg. However, this one hooking your the front of your ankle to the inner thigh can be far more practical and you can control the movement better uh, driving them into the position that you want in order to continue the fight to the ground and get the submission or the dominant position so as you can see here the legendary kimura was also very much a master in this getting the opponent down into a pin and uh, he was so good at this that this double wrist lock is now named after him the kimura it's this is him masahiko kimura at an old age still demonstrating these techniques steps deep and then with the other launches his opponent or partner and then you either get the submission or like the previous scenario he gets down into a pin so as you can see competitively and self-defense great techniques to be had so now the classical push-pull you can see it in a lot of old jujitsu self-defense but also now in uh, jiu-jitsu with the open guard it doesn't have to be on the knee and the ankle only uh, sometimes you see it a lot on the hips and the ankle so still the same principles apply push pull as you are on your back or on one side on the ground you can do it it is a very effective uh, technique and followed by a technical stand-up it's very important so as you can see a lot of them are still being used today now here i found something very interesting it is not as sophisticated as today however you can see here it's almost like an entry into a 50 50 for a leg lock uh, ending so here you see it is a scissor takedowns but towards the front so kani basami but uh, later, there's a very interesting variation I saw. So here, into a calf slice, obviously, still uh, a good technique used today competitively, uh, like I mentioned. But this uh, variation that you will see uh, in a bit is actually quite interesting. So here, you see, he goes in, he misses one leg. It's almost like an entry to a 50-50, where a lot of people like to do a heel hook but then here finishes it with a calf slice. So if you have anything to add, please let me know down below. This was Shadi, and as always, thank you for listening.